Welcome, folks, to another Game Holder production. I'm going to be doing the Urquan Masters remake of Star Control 2. Many of you probably are wondering, the fuck is Game Holder doing Star Control 2 again for? Well, let's just say I fell in love with the game all over again. And I've never got to play this remake, so I figured, hey, let's check it out. I'm going to be doing it as kind of a background project. So you won't actually get to see this probably till it's all done. Now what I've done is you have a couple different options. You have 3DO versions and 3DO pictograms that you can put into the game. You can actually choose between the PC version or the 3DO version. So I've opted for the 3DO version in many cases. There's also an optional soundtrack added onto the game. Which this was obviously part of. Let's go ahead and get started. Interstellar Frungi League presents The Urquan Masters. A lot of this game has its own dialogue, so I'll only be doing dialogue for those parts which don't contain dialogue. There were many great battles. Earth and her partner in the Alliance of Free Stars. Against the evil Urquan and its hierarchy, Battle Thralls. And the Urquan were winning. Meanwhile, on the edge of the known frontier, an amazing discovery was made. Far beneath the surface of an unexplored city, filled with the technological wonders of an advanced alien race, the Precursors, who vanished a thousand centuries ago. But then the main Urquan fleet broke through the Alliance's defensive line, isolating the planet, stranding the scientists a hundred light years away from Earth. never came. Twenty years have passed. We, the survivors of the research mission, have colonized this world. We continued our investigation of the underground city. And we have discovered its purpose. It is a factor. Factory for building starships. But there aren't enough materials to make a complete vessel. You can finish only the skeleton of one starship. But that must be enough. Because you was captain. Return to Earth. To travel the great distance, you must push through into hyperspace. Find out what has happened over these many years. Tell Earth of our plight. And if the war with the Urquan still rages, Fight for Earth and the Alliance as well as you can. This is Star Control 2. Alright, right away you're going to notice the graphics are a little sharper, nicer, the text is a little bit different. Uh, you can see the bottom right corner we have cargo, roster, devices, star map. Games, navigation, things like that. Alright, 
right, so let's head toward Earth. We'll rename our captain and our ship. Probably do something a little different. <laughs> I'm not sure what. We'll let you guys name it. Attention, interloper. Heed this recorded message. This drone vessel speaks with the voice and authority of Urquan. You are trespassing within Urquan space. This world, Earth, may not be approached for any reason. Nor will hostilities against our orbital platform be tolerated. In addition, your ship does not respond to standard hierarchy identification transmissions and is therefore deemed to be independent. This is not permissible. Only subservience shall be tolerated. This drone now needs to inform the Urquan of your transgressions. You are commanded to remain here and await the arrival of the Urquan. Disobedience will be punished. Alright, so that's what I've decided to do. I'm going to go ahead and upload this very first video, just to wet your tongue. And I want all of you that want to partake in this to first give me a name for the uh, captain and the starship. It cannot be Captain Ronstock of the starship Lug Lug. We've already done that. Uh, so we'll let you guys go ahead and uh, pick the captain and the starship name. And what I'd like you to do is come up with as many different options as you like. And if you like somebody else's, go ahead and thumbs up. And what I'll do is I'll take the most highest voted captain in Starship, even if it's Captain Ron Cock and the Starship Ding Dong. Whatever you guys come up with is what we're going to name it. And whatever is the highest rated, highest voted, highest thumbed up option. That's what we'll name the ship in the uh, following videos. Attention unidentified space vessel. I am Starbase Commander Hayes of the Slave Planet Earth. Our hyperwave broadcast is extremely weak. Situation critical. Energy cores exhausted. Scanners and deep radar are non-functional. We cannot identify your vessel. Are you the scheduled hierarchy resupply ship? Repeat, are you the resupply vessel? No, this is the starship blank. But we stand ready to assist you. The Starship what? Never mind, look. We won't last much longer. Here's our situation. According to our oath of fealty to the Urquan, we must maintain the star base. But we have no space vessels of our own. And the shield prevents us from contacting Earth. So we're totally dependent on the Urquan supply vessels for everything we need up here. We know there's a hierarchy base on the surface of the moon, but we can't contact them. The Urquan were supposed to resupply the base at regular five-year intervals, but we haven't received anything in almost eight years. What we don't recycle, we can usually synthesize, but to do so, we need replacement radioactives for our generator energy cores. If you could bring us some radioactive elements, we can fabricate the cores ourselves. Are you willing to help us? Where can we find the radioactive elements you The need? fastest way to get radioactives in this system would be to land on Mercury and scour the surface for deposits of radioactive elements. But be careful, Mercury is a pretty inhospitable place. Watch out for earthquakes and those high temperature areas. We will leave now to find the elements you require. Thanks, I'll make sure to mention this the next time I talk with our masters. I'm sure they will reward you. I'm sure they will too. Alright. So we're going to play this very much like the other LP. Probably almost identically. It's going to look different and sound different. That's really what I'm interested in because I never had a chance to play this remade version. I'm more curious about the different voices that they used. Things like that. And again, it's going to be an ongoing project. 
probably do a video or two a week here and there. We'll mainly be focusing on privateer at the moment. All right, so some of the new things we get to do here. We can scan. When we go to scan, we can do an auto scan. You'll notice the pictograms here are a little bit different than the original. We can auto scan it, and that'll actually do energy, biological, and minerals all at once. Pretty nice option. You can also do individualized. Uh, when you throw your lander down, you're going to notice that we get a lot big, bigger screen. This does not prevent me from dying any easier. It does give you the uh, opportunity to kind of avoid death a little bit better. I'm just going to grab every little starting material I can here. Not going too much out of my way. So we need to get a new name for our captain and a new name for our starship. I think we'll go with Captain Cocksucker. Cocksmoker is even better. And our flagship will call the flagship the starship. Shit burger. No wait, shit burger won't fit. Shit nugget. Shit, shit nugget won't fit either. Fuck am I gonna call it? Captain Cock Smoker aboard the Starship. Shit. Starship shit? 
a bunch of shit nuggy. Yes, I like it. What I want you guys, folks, gals, and peoples to do is to submit a comment below on what you think the next video or episode of this should contain as far as the captain name did you find any radio did you find any radioactive elements for our power cores we're ready to transfer we're initiating transfer of radioactives captain now as soon as our engineers can refit the energy cores there that's much better power ratings are climbing life support is coming back into the green Deep radar systems and sensors are now online, and I can scan your vessel. What the hell kind of ship is that? Just who are you, Captain? Captain Coxmoker of the Starship Shit Nuggy. We're the survivors of the Star Control Science Research Team in the Vela Star System. Star Control Science Mission, huh? <laughs> Captain, I served as a Star Control Officer during the war aboard several cruisers in the Corward Front. And if there'd been any scientific mission to Vela, I would have heard about it. The mission was highly secret. Hmm. You know, come to think of it, there were some rumors that Corridor 9, the Special Operations Division of Star Control, was directing some hush-hush operation near Androsynth Space. The Vela Star System. Yes, that would be the right direction. So, Captain, if you say it's true, how do you explain that huge alien starship you're flying? And why are you here? What do you want from us? We return from Earth to give you the technological secrets of the precursors and to help you fight the hierarchy. Ah, fight the Urquan. Win back our freedom. I remember having such thoughts myself once, long time ago. That was in the first years after the defeat when it was still terrifying to look up and see the bloody glow of the pulsating slave shield overhead. So day and night we gazed up at the impenetrable wall as though the sheer power of our hatred would pull it down. But over the years I spent so much of my time struggling down on the surface under the shield and then later up here trying to keep the station alive that I'd forgotten what it means to be free, to hate our Urquan masters. And now here you are, in an alien ship of unknown power offering me your assistance to fight against the hierarchy again after all these years. Captain, your offer is intriguing. It's tempting to think that with your advanced precursor technology, we can somehow crack the Earth's slave shield and reassemble the Alliance to attack the hierarchy. And this time, win the damn war. Consider the consequences if you should fail. The Urquan won't just punish us here on the station. They'll exact a gruesome retribution on the surface below as well. Before I commit this station to helping you attack the Urquan and accepting the risk of annihilation if we are defeated, I have to make sure that you and your ship have what it takes to oppose the hierarchy. Oh, I got what it I'll takes. I'll make you a deal. If you can eliminate the alien base on the moon and get rid of that threat at least, I will seriously consider your offer. We should go now and neutralize the base. Wait. What details can you give us about the base of the moon? After the Urquan erected the slave shield around the Earth and established this space station, they decided to leave a contingent of combat ships close to the Earth to keep watch on our planet and confirm that they were obeying the Urquan slave laws. I'm certain they're still out there on the surface of the moon because we can pick up a constant stream of alien broadcasts. We'll go now. Neutralize the base. Be careful, Captain. There are probably a dozen Spathy eluders and Illrath Avengers down there on the lunar surface. I don't know why they haven't come after you yet, but when they do, you'd better have your weapons armed and your thrusters burning hot. And we'll see about that. Scan mineral energy and biological. See how beautiful that is? Just gets it all. Oops. Report from service. We have discovered an alien base and have explored its interior. The installation must have been abandoned many years ago, but great care has been taken to make it appear active. Life support systems are functioning. Fusion generators are at full output. Robotic construction vehicles have been programmed to roam the lunar surface, bulldozing moon dust into random piles. 
In addition, we have found the installation's hyperwave locked in the transmit mode, endlessly playing the same alien recording. Although we cannot translate the message, our Xenotech Ensign Rigby believes the message is some kind of alert or mayday broadcast. The base is filled with useful materials and equipment. We will scavenge as much as we can and bring them aboard immediately. back down and scavenge some more. You gotta love this big window we got here. You can see so much more. You can kill easier. It's like a star control 2 dream come true. Annihilate everything on the moon. The moon must be empty when we leave. Fuck their little pile of dusty robots. <sighs> Alright, Captain Cocksmoker is satisfied with that. We're headed back home. Remember, leave your comments and your requests. Have you dealt with the base yet? Below in the comment section. I want a new captain name and I want a new ship name. And I want it fucking fast. We found the base. It was abandoned years ago, you stupid silly bastard. I'll be darned. All these years we've been listening to their incoherent broadcast and we never even guessed. Captain, listen closely. Long range sensors show a ship closing on this station fast. Our computer identifies it as Ilrap, Avenger class. I think you've got a fight on your hands, Captain. Your best bet is to wait until you have point blank range. Captain, it's jamming our signal. See, that's way better than I could have done with my own voice acting. By the fetid breath of the dark twin, Kazan, a human and an alien starship. How fascinating. When I intercepted that Urquan drone and learned that an unidentified starship had approached Earth, uh, I never expected to find such a remarkable vehicle in the hands of a human. Humans are prey animals, weak and helpless. But here is a human in an armored starship and therefore in direct violation of the Oath of Fealty. I am sure our masters, the Orquan, will punish Earth most severely for this treachery when I present them with the twisted wreckage of your ship and your many charred corpses. Where the hell did you come from? Since you will soon be dead, I will gladly explain. We have spent many years gleefully preying on the Pekunk. They are a pitiful, easily killed species. And we would have continued in this divine worship of Dogar and Kazon, but we required additional crew members and repairs to our cloaking device. So we departed the Jiglas constellation and set course for home. But before we had reached our region of space, we detected the passage of a nearby vessel, the Erwan Drone. It informed us about you, so here we are. And now, you die! Well, the best part about this playthrough is I'm going to learn how to pronounce half these fucking aliens. Not me. What a beautiful sight, Captain. I haven't seen an Avenger blown away like that since the battle in Draco. I guess you've shown that you can handle yourself in battle, Captain. So my last reservation about helping you has been dissolved. I will commit this station to helping free Earth and defeat the Urquan. We may get our atoms rearranged in the process, but by God, Captain, we're going to try. So the obvious first step is to get the precursor equipment and software over here so that we can make it work with our ship repair fabricators. But then what, Captain? 
And Commander, we proceed to kick some major alien butt. But we'll try doing some different dialogue that we didn't do the first time too. We will slowly build our strength, unify an allied Starfleet, and bring your Quan to their knee equivalents. A sensible plan, Captain. Let's get to work. Good luck. By the way, Captain, I think we need a name for this new alliance we're going to forge. And since it was your idea, it's only fair that you get the honor of naming it. So, what will it be? The Empire... <laughs> I don't know, it's kind of hard not to pick. The Empire of Cocksmoker. The... Well, you're the one with the big starship. So be it. Now, Captain, I expect the configuration process for the Starbase to take at least two weeks, so let's get to work. Now, of course, the Empire of Cocksmoker will change as we change our captain name. I have good news to report, viewer. Captain. We have successfully integrated the precursor technology from your ship into our fabricator system, and as you can see, we've already begun minor repairs on your ship, patching up some of the micrometeorite holes. We noticed that your ship does not have an emergency warp escape unit, so our engineers rigged up some for you and each of your escorts. Now, you should be able to escape from a bad situation with the touch of a button, but there is a cost, however. The unit gulps up five fuel units each time your precursor ship uses it. Also, we now have a limited capacity to make modifications to your ship, to refine starship fuel, to build additional combat ships, and to train new members of your crew for the flagship and any ships you acquire for your fleet. Captain, I know you're eager to get to work, so I'll be brief. If you have any questions how this starbase works, what resources we need, or just some background information on the galaxy, don't hesitate to ask. Oh, I won't. I got minerals offload. And it kind of Not a bad job, Captain. That's cool, that's different. We need some more background information. Certainly, Captain. What do you need to know? Would you elaborate on the facilities here in the Starbase? We can modify your precursor ship, build additional combat vessels, and supply you with fuel and crew. What can you do to enhance and modify the shit nuggy? Our engineers and precursor specialists agree with the scientists from your world that your starship was designed to be a workhorse vehicle, which could be easily reconfigured for different missions by adding or swapping self-contained equipment packs, which we call modules. The modules we can build right now are thruster units, which make your ship move faster, attitude jets, which allow you to rotate the ship more quickly, crew pods, which provide life support facilities for up to 50 additional crew members. Storage bays, which increase your ship's cargo capacity for mineral resources. Fuel tanks, which hold an additional 50 units of fuel. Dynamos, which feed energy into your combat energy batteries, improving your weapon's rate of fire. And last but not least, ion bolt guns, combat weaponry, the exact function of which depends on its location aboard the ship. When put in the first or front module slot, it fires a single shot forward. When put in the second slot, it fires two shots spread to the left and right of center. When put in the third slot, it fires two shots directly left and right, and when put in the last or rear slot, it fires a single shot straight backwards. Holy shit, all right! How will I get fuel for the shit nugget? This base is designed to service hierarchy ships. Forge designed to service hierarchy ships. Fortunately, your flagship <laughs> uses the same stabilized Broken antimatter technology as hierarchy vessels and will be able to synthesize what you need. However, Due to the size of your ship, we'll have to produce vast quantities of fuel, which will be a substantial drain on our resources. How can I assemble a fleet of fighting ships? Our shipyard facilities are sophisticated and fully automated, permitting a handful of star-based personnel to do the same job as 500 vac-suited construction workers. However, the only designs that we had in our computers were incomplete hierarchy ship designs. Things looked grim until one of the officers came forward with an amazing story. Even though the Urquan destroyed every Earthling cruiser in the fleet nearly 20 years ago, one of my maintenance engineers was a Starship production assistant at the Detroit shipyard. When Earth was conquered, she was ordered to destroy all ship construction databases. But she secretly made copies of the blueprint disk and then kept them with her ever since. These disks contain all the data we need to build as many Earthling cruisers as you want, provided you, Captain, can supply the large amounts of mineral resources required to build those vessels. In theory, Captain, we could build alien starships here if we had designs for them. However, it's a well-known fact that alien vessels just can't be flown in combat without native starship captains at the helm. 
I will reacquire additional personnel for my ship. We have almost 2,000 highly motivated, skilled professionals aboard this starbase, and every single one of them wants a berth aboard your starship. However, each hand we lose to your ship means less manpower here at the starbase, and this is reflected in the crew RU cost. As long as you don't lose too many crew members to combat or planet exploration, the RU cost will remain static. But we have only so many warm bodies on this star base, and if your needs for crew grow beyond a certain point, the cost could increase dramatically. That's something we did never saw in the original LP I did of this. Would you please explain the resource allocation system? As you know, Captain, we've committed the entire output of this station to building your flagship and your battle fleet into the strongest force possible. However, our resources are very limited, and we feel you must decide how we are to spend our effort and materials. To aid you in making these decisions, we have implemented a resource allocation scheme. We provide you with a numerical assessment of the station's resources and ascribe a cost to each task we can perform and each device we can build. It's up to you to decide how you're going to spend your resource units, or RU as we call them. To acquire more RU, you must bring resources back to the starbase. These resources can be either in the form of mineral ores gathered from planet surfaces or already refined metals and other valuable materials from the wreckage of enemy starships. What kind of resources are most useful to our mission? The most straightforward way you can accumulate resource units is to bring mineral ores back to this starbase. There are probably enough resources in just the nearby dozen stars to build your ship into a powerful battleship or to create a strong task force of combat vessels. We would also recommend that you build several additional storage bays. When gathering minerals, focus on cleaning out one star system at a time. This way you minimize the cost of travel through hyperspace. What well, use are planet letters? Sophisticated light form analysis features. While I respect your search for abstract knowledge, frankly, Captain, in our present circumstances, I see little use for such data here. Perhaps you can make use of biological information elsewhere. You answer my questions on this topic. What else can I tell you? I'd like some historical data. What aspect of history, Captain? I'd like to know about the other starfaring races. Which group of aliens? The members of the old alliance. Okay. Which race? The Shafixti. The Shafixti are a race of intelligent marsupials who had been civilized for only a few decades when the war began. They were discovered in the Delta Gorno star system by the Yehat, who adopted and then uplifted the Shofixti, giving them advanced technology and cultural definition. Shofixti are noble and fearless warriors, Captain. In addition, their incredible fecundity and rapid maturation rate kept Alliance ranks solid even at the worst part of the war. You know, I once flew as an observer aboard one of their ships on routine patrol. We never saw the enemy, but I could never stop thinking about the glory device it had strapped to the bottom of its hull. Tell me about the Yehat. The Yehat are a race of ancient warrior clans that have been traveling the stars for many centuries. Clans are highly competitive and sometimes even wage war on each other, but the clans are all loyal to the queen and her royal family, known as the Veepzeeps. The Veepzeeps have been in power for over 2,000 years, and it is said that during their rule, the Yehat never lost a battle. The Aralus. I'd like to think I'm not a bigoted person, Captain, especially when it comes to allies, but there's just something about those Arilu that gives me the creeps. One thing I'll say for them, though, they possess some technique for moving really fast through hyperspace. They never let us know what it was, but it sure beats the pants off our fastest ships. What about the Chinjesu? The Chinjesu were leaders of the Alliance, even though they refused to accept formally the title. I don't know if their silicon-based biology is just plain superior to our old carbon models, or if their fantastic intellect were the product of an ancient, peaceful culture. Whatever the reason, I'd rather be taking orders from a Chinzesu than any other life form, absolutely. One of the more amazing things about them was they never used hyperwave communicators. They could send messages naturally, and their natural hyperwave receptors were much more sensitive than even our best units. What about that? We didn't really get much of a chance to learn about those mechanical beings, but I'll tell you what I know. They're the product of a distant, unknown culture who sent a giant factory arc into our region of space many centuries ago. The mother arc, that's what the Earth press called it, turned out millions of robots and finally broke down. 
I don't know why the Myrnaherm didn't repair the Mother Ark. Maybe they can. My Murnaherm. personal guess as to why they were sent here is that they're on the leading edge of a colonization project. And once the Myrnaherm have tamed enough new worlds, the genuine colonists, whoever they are, will arrive and claim their due. So much fun to hear someone else pronounce it. Most raw recruits saw the siren as nothing more than uh, warm, breathing pinups. Warm they are, and yes, they do breathe most magnificently, but Captain, they are far more than simple joy units. The history shows the Sirene established and maintained a peaceful culture from the Bronze Age through their discovery of Starflight. Before their planet was destroyed in a horrible cataclysm, their world was in Eden. About the what other group of aliens are you interested in? The Battle Thralls. Which species? The Mycon. The Mycons are hard to get a handle on. In fact, I'm not sure any human has ever had a real conversation with a Mycon. What we know of them, we've learned from their corpses, which I may add have a nasty habit of coming back to life when thawed out from a decompression quick freeze. Mycon ships seem to expend a significant amount of energy on life support. This is probably because the Mycon only thrive in temperatures close to the melting point of lead. As far as we know, the Mycon are the only race to actively seek out the Urquan in order to become combat slaves. What about the Spaffy? Imagine facing a cowardly, mobile clam armed with a howitzer, and you've got a good idea of what it's like dealing with the Spaffy. Although they tend to avoid battles as much as their masters will allow, once in battle, the Spaffy eluder is one tough cookie. I once heard a rumor, though I don't like to believe in it myself, that a rogue band of courageous Spathy broke away from the main star fleet, painted their ships black with bright red stripes, and formed the Black Spathy Squadron, dedicated to performing brave and hostile deeds. Like I said, I'd have to see it to believe it. And the Umga? It's unfortunate that the Umga fell to the Urquan so early in the war, because I suspect we would have gotten along well with those big blob creatures. At the very least, it would have been entertaining. We know them a bit better than most races because they were eager to talk with our ships before, after, and during battle. The Arilu intimated that they had a relationship with the Umga before the Urquan arrived, but I don't know any detail. The Androsen. When I was flying combat missions along the Corward front, there was nothing we feared more than the Androsith hit-and-run squadron. Their blazer ships were more than a match for our cruisers, so we stayed clear of Ada Volpecule, their home star. In addition, I think each of us aboard the ship knew deep down in our hearts that the Androsith had a damn good reason for hating us. Our grandparents had kept them as slaves for nearly 50 years. What about the Ilrath? I still have nightmares about those spiders taking me prisoner, using me as one of their six sacrifices to Dogar and Kazon, their twin gods of destruction and torment. Those guys were almost as scary as the Anderson to those of us in Deep Space Patrol. Their Avenger ships could appear out of nowhere and melt a cruiser down to slag in seconds. Luckily for us, the bulk of the Ilrath fleet was thrown against the Genjesu and the Myrnaherm. What the fucks? The Starship Far Voyager under the command of Captain Jeffrey L. Rand encountered the Vux near Beta Mira. Although the details are hazy, it's generally accepted that Rand offended the Vux Starship Commander with an inadvertent insult. What other group of aliens are you interested in? Were there any alien races who weren't in the war? None that we had made formal contact with. The Chen Jesu implied that they had met two other star-faring species. One near the Gikla's constellation and the other directly coreward from Procyon. The Arilu Lalile once mentioned having some fun with an alien race in Draconis. But like so much else with the Arilu, they never revealed the whole story. I'm sure there are hundreds more alien races in our galaxy, but beyond what I've told you, your guess is as good as mine. That's sufficient information. Would you like information on any other aspect of history? What about ancient galactic history? Uh, we have some data on this subject. What do you want to know about? What can you tell me about the precursors? Hell, you probably know more about them than I do, but here goes. About 200,000 years ago, when our great to the nth grandparents were just starting to play with stone knives and bearskins, a star-faring species suddenly appeared on the galactic scene and spread like wildfire. We found evidence of their presence just about everywhere, from an orbital platform on Alpha Centauri to a stack of data plates in a cave on Pluto to some nameless widget found in a voodoo shop in New Orleans. 
And we never found a precursor body or even a picture of one. We can conjecture what they look like by examining the scale and layout of their equipment. Such an analysis indicates they were giants, say five to eight meters tall and twice as wide. I don't know if they looked more like a brontosaur or an elephant. Anyway, about 3,000 years after the precursors made their dramatic appearance, they vanished. Poof! As far as we can tell, it took less than a decade to happen. What about the other races from ancient past? You mean besides the precursors? Well, the only information we have is second-hand based on some research by a Chenzesu historian that I read at the Academy. Zedsert Sack, the historian, found some evidence that there was a group of alien races who formed an interstellar empire not too far from here about 22,000 years ago. The only species in this empire actually lived in our region of space was a race of rock-like creatures who lived in the Volpeculae constellation. The presence of the hostile androsynth in that part of space severely limited Sitzertzak's research. He never even found out the race's name. Oh, it's so much easier having him read it than me. Is there any indication that aliens visited Earth in the past? Yes, there is. Aside from the precursor relics we have found on Earth, often in museums mislabeled as modern art, we've discovered disturbing evidence of much more recent visitation. Perhaps you're already aware that during the mid to late 20th century, there were unaccountable UFO sightings as well as dozens of reported encounters with alien life forms. Although we can discount many of the reports as wishful fabrication or traumatic translation, the military authorities of the time kept a secret record of the incidents which were legitimate. In each such case, the aliens are almost identical in appearance. They have white skin and minimal facial features except for huge almond-shaped eyes which are often described as glowing or luminescent. This description fits almost perfectly the Arilu Lali Lay. In most of the legitimate encounters, the people involved describe being physically examined or modified by the aliens. In some cases, unusual pregnancies occurred, and in almost every instance, there were repeat visitations as though the Arilu Lali Lay were doing checkups on their subjects. We never got the chance to confront the Arilu Lali Lay about what they did to us and why. I wonder if we ever will. Fascinating. Would you like information on any other aspect of history? Hell, I don't know. I think we've had enough. Sure. Anything else? How can we defeat the Yerkwan? Can you be more specific? Where can I find the most useful plentiful mineral resources? If you have the patience, I would recommend you spend several months or even a year gathering mineral resources. You can find such minerals on almost any planet surface, but the quality and density will vary depending upon the type of planet you're on. Base metals are probably the most common materials you'll find, but they aren't particularly valuable. You can find rarer precious and radioactive elements on metal-rich worlds such as Mercury. An old miner once told me that you could tell the relative quality of a planet's minerals based on the planet's color as seen from space. Remember the color sequence from good to bad? The miner had a mnemonic that went something like, very young orangutan could grow bananas perhaps rather well. It is also the case that mineral yields will be better at hotter stars. Temperature is related to the size and color of a star. Red stars are the coolest, then orange, yellow, green, blue, and the hottest stars are white. That's what I deal with aliens I meet in space. That all depends on whom you meet, doesn't it, Captain? Well, in all seriousness, if you encounter the Ilrap, Vox, Androsynth, or other hierarchy battle thralls, I wouldn't hold out much hope for a peaceful encounter. So if you feel you have the advantage, attack. The resources you will scavenge from the enemy's wreckage are well worth the effort. If you can find Alliance races who are in a position to help us, then you must convince them to join with us. Their assistance may be crucial to our success. If you're in my shoes, what would you do now? Hmm, let's see. You need to build up and balance the strength of your flagship. I would add thrusters up to, say, five or six. Speed is essential in combat, but it would also pay off over the long haul in hyperspace. And if you prefer to avoid confrontation, nothing beats a great pair of legs. I would add turning that. jets for increased maneuverability. I would add enough weapons to defend yourself if you're caught without escort ships. You need more crew, at least 50 to make productive voyages into space. You need additional fuel, at least 50 units. Your weapons will be underpowered in combat if you don't have at least one dynamo. Use the resource units you have accumulated to improve your flagship. 
How can we deal with your Kwan? Captain, I wish I had an easy answer, but I don't. The only way I can see of liberating Earth as well as the Alliance allies is to destroy the Urquan and their armada of battle thralls entirely. Do you have any long-range plans to defeat the Urquan hierarchy? To defeat our enemies, we will need awesome strength, both in your flagship and the fleet, as well as the assistance of powerful new allies. Though combat will be unavoidable and sometimes necessary to achieve our goals, I'm certain your wits will be at least as important as your weapons. You'll need to explore this region of space, gathering resources and information wherever you go. How can I find the Urquan? I don't know, Captain, but I suspect their battle thralls know more than we do, so I suggest you try to gather information from them, perhaps by force. How can we attack the Urquan's most effective? At first, your ship will be far too vulnerable to permit frontal assault on the Urquan. Even when your ship is at full power, we're faced with the reality that the hierarchy has thousands of ships. You cannot win the fight alone, Captain. You need allies. Also, towards the end of the war, when the hierarchy broke through the Corward Front, we heard rumors that the Urquan had unleashed some kind of super weapon which was unstoppable by normal means. You need to find out if that rumor was true, Captain, because if the Urquan do have such a weapon, we'll have to find some way to stop it or all our efforts are for naught. How can I make alliances? Soon. If you encounter an unknown alien race, proceed carefully and diplomatically. We need all the friends we can get, and we certainly can't afford any more enemies. Remember, Captain, with your precursor starship, you hold awesome power. But there will be situations when dealing with an alien race where a carrot will serve better than a stick. But first, you must determine what carrot the alien wants. Yeah, I know the carrot the alien wants. It's in my pants. What's the fastest way for us to build up our strength? You need to accumulate enough resources so we can build up your flagship and assemble a strong fleet. I'd also recommend that you acquire blueprints for other, more powerful ships than our trusty cruiser. I suspect that aliens will not give you such prints unless you form an alliance with them. What else can we discuss? Learn what I need to know. What else can I tell you? Fine. Is there anything else you need? I think that's it, Commander. Goodbye, Captain. Yes, Cap. Be careful out. Alright, so first thing we're gonna do after that lengthy the Stoller Kroll catch rubber. We're gonna outfit our starship. Let's see we have the fuel, the modules, blah blah blah, we're gonna go strip the modules. Just kind of let you add where you need to. Shipyard here, we get fleet. Folks, that wraps it up for this video. We'll see you soon with more Star Control 2, the remake. Remember, leave us a uh, new name for the captain and a new name for the ship. And uh, we'll see you next video. Thanks for watching.